We're back on WGN TV Political Report. 20 years removed from the deadly terror attacks on September 11, 2001, just half of Americans say the U.S. is safer from terror threats than it was before then. The solemn anniversary comes just weeks after U.S. troops withdrew from Afghanistan, ending our longest war. 9-11 has impacted every part of our American life. And the poll shows 46% now say the U.S. has changed for the worse over the last two decades. I spoke with Robert Pape, professor of political science at the University of Chicago and director of the Chicago Project on Security and Threats. Professor, good morning. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about how on September 11th, Americans came together as one, um, but we see the way things, the, uh, things are right now. I guess the question is, did the hijackers ultimately get what they wanted? Did they accomplish what they needed to do? 9-11 uh, threw us off balance. And the fact is, that is what the hijackers were hoping to do. 9-11, uh, there was a period of time for uh, not just a few weeks, but actually a few months, um, where the two parties came together. Uh, there were some great moments of them actually holding hands and joining hands. There were some very important decisions, such as the creation of the Department of Homeland Security, which really cut across uh, party, uh, party lines. But what happened was not so much that you saw the seeds of political division in the couple years after 9-11. What you saw was America being thrown off balance. That is, going down roads, which now were producing more terrorists than they were killing. That is counterproductive roads. Uh, in invading Iraq, for instance, in nation building in Afghanistan. Well, what that has now done is created in the aftermath of those now clear or fairly clear problematic decisions, um, a lot of division. So the division is not so much happened immediately after 9-11. It's more, it threw us off balance. We went down a certain road and now that off balance has gotten worse because we're now, it's produced division. You know what makes these people tick. So here we are 20 years afterwards and I'm just wondering, are the threats greater today? I mean, one thing I've, I've come to learn from folks like you is that the terrorists have patience. The terrorists have patience. Our big danger after 9-11 was overreaction. That's what threw us off balance. 20 years now, and especially after what we've just witnessed in Afghanistan, the bigger danger is now underreaction. Many people have so soured on this effort to make us safe. They just want to put it behind us and the world is over and so forth. Well, there is the, the fact is these two big wars have stirred up hornet's nests of terrorists overseas. Um, still 11,000 scattered in Syria, for instance, not making much in the page, uh, 10,000 in Afghanistan. Now, these are not congealed. They don't have bases. They're not ready to strike Chicago tomorrow. However, we need to then not just we need to not then just be cavalier and think we can just ignore this problem and it will just simply disappear. No, we need this over the horizon approach that's a committed approach, not just simply a slogan, one that won't produce more terrorists than it kills, but one that is a committed, realistic strategy for keeping us safe. And how much does the domestic enemy, the fact that there's so much uh, distrust of our governmental institutions, that we have our, our, we basically have our domestic terrorists now, is that something that feeds into the, are the terrorists loving that? We have two future terrorist problems from today on. We have the international terrorist problem. We have the domestic terrorist problem. Uh, they're both, they're both um, uh, real and, and present dangers. We also have the interaction of the two. It is possible that we're going to see ways in which these cross over into each other. So we've got to just be aware that as we go forward, we need to not overreact as we did in the years after 9-11 and not underreact as I think we're tempted to do now, but something very difficult for a democracy to do, which is we need middle ground strategies, middle ground approaches. Um, and this is really a challenge for a democracy that likes to either be all in or all out. 
Well, just time for one more question. So let me ask you this. I know you have advised major policymakers in D.C. Um, if Bi President Biden called you in today and said, give me one piece of advice on what we need to do, what would you tell him? Uh, what I would tell him is I'd actually stretch it to two. <laughs> uh, I would say two things. Uh, number one, overseas, internationally, we need to uh, uh, build out the over-the-horizon policy with more local bases here outside of Afghanistan. And then I would say inside of the country, we have to do more to monitor insurrectionist sentiments in the general population, much the way we monitor COVID in the general population. We need to not think that what happened on January 6th was simply a product of a handful of militia groups. Uh, no, that's not really what we saw. We saw much more of a collective mainstream uh, action than we were expecting. That means we need to do more understanding of the sentiments in our country for political violence. We do that all the time for political horse races. But this, these really are the joint two things that I believe are most important for President Biden. We live in complex times. Professor Robert Pape of University of Chicago, thanks for your insight. We'll talk to you again soon, sir. Appreciate the insight. Absolutely. Thank you.